I think similar to what you discovered, they found that the athletes couldn't did, didn't like staying in the water for much more than a few minutes if if the water was um, less than fourteen degrees. That's for the athletes based at the Australian Institute of Sport down in Canberra, but here in Queensland, because the yeah the normal uh, average annual temperature is a fair bit higher than what it is in Canberra and athletes are often training in hotter conditions we found that athletes preferred slightly colder conditions like they could tolerate they were more they were comfortable staying in the water for 10 minutes if the water was 10 degrees celsius so there's a bit of a, a happy medium there between how long you stay in the water and the water temperature itself well we're just saying at 10 minutes like what are they trying to accomplish reduce inflammation you know make people just feel better more relaxed. What were the reasons for the protocol and who crafted it? I think physical trainers have been using cold water immersion in their sort of cold whirlpools, whirlpools for, for many years. And the the idea behind using cold water immersion sort of was based on three things. First of all, it was the hydrostatic pressure exerted by the water on the limbs, uh, which theoretically would cause some fluid shifts and fluid shifts that would benefit the post-exercise recovery period and reduce swelling. Then the next thing uh, was to look at for, for the cold water immersion to reduce muscle soreness. So the idea was that by introducing the cold water that would stimulate pain-sensitive nerves or reduce the activity or the, the, the stimulation of pain-sensitive nerves and therefore help to reduce delayed onset muscle soreness. And then the third basis for using cold water immersion was in an attempt to reduce inflammation. So there's this thinking that when you have infiltration of white blood cells or leukocytes into muscle tissue after exercise to help repair some of the damaged muscle tissue, there's a, a an associated what we call a secondary inflammatory response which causes you know, secondary tissue damage because of some activation of those white blood cells. So the idea was that by using cold water immersion, you would reduce the temperature of muscle tissue and therefore reduce the activity and metabolism of these white blood cells and therefore potentially limit the amount of secondary muscle damage that would occur after exercise. And therefore, all three of those things, theoretically, would expedite the the post-exercise recovery period. So what are you studying? People are using these protocols that just haven't been quantified or like what is your study about so we started out we've looked at a couple of main avenues in cold water immersion we started out looking at the how the cold water how cold water immersion influences the parasympathetic nervous system so our parasympathetic nervous system is the, the rest and digest branch of the nervous system the autonomic nervous system so it's responsible for reducing heart rate and we wanted to look at to see whether cold water immersion would benefit athletes in terms of making them feel more relaxed so we we did some studies looking at parasympathetic activation and by the and by by that i mean we were measuring heart rate after exercise and what we found was that by doing cold water immersion after a bout of endurance exercise that helped to restore heart rate all rapidly and that was associated with feelings greater feeling enhanced feelings of relaxation after exercise so that was uh, a potentially beneficial effect and that sort of confirmed some of the existing literature. That's been quite a consistent finding across the years that cold water immersion yeah, makes athletes feel more relaxed in the post-exercise recovery period. 